Today I'm going to show you how I lit up my Halloween display for 2022. Now this video is solely about the lighting and electrical component of my Halloween display and will not show the entire walkthrough or all the projects created. To see the entire walkthrough, I've included a link to that video in the description of this video. This video is only going to talk about the electrical and lighting aspect of my Halloween display. So if you want to see the walkthrough, the setup, and the big reveal, click on the drop down link that's on your right hand screen up there and you can see how we set it up, how we made everything, and just the big walkthrough and reveal. So this video is only about lighting and how to light a display. Also, I'm including the link to the big reveal video in the description of the video if you want to click that one instead of the drop down. So let's get to the lighting aspect. For the first floor, I'm using floodlights that are LED panels. These come in about 10 or 12 different color settings. They have a little remote and I have two of them, one by the left window and one by the right window. In order to activate them, I have them on timers. I'm going to include the timers and the LED floodlights that I'm using in the description of the video. Let's see if you can see it, yeah, one right there and the other one is right on the other side of the porch. For the garage purple hue that we have, I'm using an LED floodlight bulb that's right there on the right hand side in the bushes facing the garage and it's using a spike light socket. I'm going to include that in the description as well. And then for the roof, these baths are painted with phosphorescent paint and there's two black lights, one on the left, one on the right. Each black light is 100 watts. For the trees and the canopy, we're using a total of seven floodlights. Four red LED floodlights attached to a light spike socket that are attached on the ridge of the roof pointing towards the pine tree. And on the oak tree and ash tree, we have three LED spotlights, two that are purple and one that is red pointing upwards. I'm going to show you right now the light spike socket and the LED bulbs that I use. Also, the links are included in the description below. For the flower bed, we have these changing LED lights. Now these are 10 watts each and there's three lights positioned at the left, the middle and the right. They have a remote that can change it from a solid light to an ever-changing light or a wavy light. So I like this about them, but they can also remain as a solid stationary color. These are also on timers and automatically turn on when the sun goes down. For big props or things that you want to stand out, I like using singular landscape lighting. Now these come in 5 and 7 watts and I have them in soft white. So these don't change color and they have this yellowish hue and I use them for big props such as the jack-o'-lantern, the skeleton and some of the mushrooms that I want to stand out. For the entrance, I have these LED string lights that come in purple and orange. I love these lights because it comes with six different settings. They can sparkle, they can wave, they can shine at different speeds. So I have them stationary right now, but they come in different lengths. I believe this one's over 100 feet and it's really inexpensive, so I really like this one. For accent lighting, such as the stone pillars, the gravestones, the statues, we're using 10 watt LED lights. These are the same ones we used on the flower bushes. You can change them to about 10 different colors and there's even a strobing and flashing effect. I love them in the stationary blue and purple colors that we've selected here. For the pumpkin centerpiece that we have over here, we have an LED panel that changes colors and it's hidden right there by the bushes. And we have a red LED light on the stone pillar as well. Along with this, we have an orange LED light inside of this bush right over here, or should I say this shrub, that's putting light on this inferno and part of this display. So that light is orange, and as you can see, the light on the bottom has already changed. It goes through a cycle of about eight different colors, and I think it really makes the mood and changes it really nicely. For the skeleton, we have a singular landscape light in warm white. 
the mushrooms right here are lit with two different lights, a singular landscape light in warm white and an LED panel right here on the right hand side that's set to purple, which gives it a nice accenting feature. Right next to it, we have the toxic spill. This light right over here on this panel is actually a black light. And of course, it highlights this foam spray that we've painted with some neon green. That's how we get this to glow. The jack-o'-lanterns in my front lawn are operated by an LED candle that's rated for outdoor use. The candle looks like a candle, but it's made out of plastic. It has a timer inside of it, and only once do I need to set it up where it'll be on for six hours and off for 18 hours. So every day at the same time, it turns on for six hours. This is super convenient and super awesome to be able to not have to worry about turning them on. If you want to see how I made these jack-o'-lanterns, just look at the description of this video and I'll include the tutorial there or a pop-up on the upper right-hand corner. You can click that little pop-up to see how I did them. The jack-o'-lanterns on the roof are individually powered with an LED light bulb. I believe there's 14 jack-o'-lanterns on this roof, so that means that I have 14 extension cords up there, but we're not drawing a lot of power. Each jack-o'-lantern has been modified, and an LED bulb that's only 6 watts was inserted into each of these. So we're not taking a lot of power, it's not overloading anything, and that's how we light them up. As you can see, the porch is green, but as we move over, this pear tree on the right-hand side is a little different. That is because we're using a green floodlight, and there's a socket right on the bottom. I think you can see it right there, shining up at the tree, and it spills over to the house, so it gives it that nice accent feature. The house itself is being lit by one singular LED panel that's actually right behind the jack-o'-lantern. If we walk a little closer, we can see that it's coming from the bottom right there in the middle. So we have it set to a shade of purple that shines the entire house in this purplish blue kind of color. So I think it gives it a really nice effect. And once it hits the web, it highlights the webs as well. To make sure your display stands out, you need accent features. So you want big, bold colors in the background and then different types of colors that all coincide together in the front. So as you can see, we have greens and purples, and then we have soft white lights that are illuminating big projects, but the trees in the back have this red and there's purple on the left. So you just wanna make sure that you're not going crazy with these colors. You wanna to stick to maybe three main colors. And over here, it's red, green, and purple. Anything else might make it look too much, so you just want to give it these nice accent features. When trying to light up your display, you definitely want cohesion. For example, my graveyard over here has purples and blues mostly. You have the Bigfoot in the back that is lit by a warm white singular landscape lighting. But you also have the string lights right in the back of Bigfoot, which makes for a nice backdrop. Those Christmas lights, they're actually Christmas lights, match with the sign over here, so that ties it in very nicely. The stone pillars are red, which ties in with this over here, which is blue, it has some yellow, it has some green, and of course, the focal point, which is the house, which is draped in the first floor in green. Well, the light's turned off now, but it's draped in green, purple, and then the backdrop. That's the very important part, lighting the backdrop. So to make my life easier, I have these three outlet adapters. They are amazing. I have about 15 of them. They let you put three more extension cords attached to it like this, and all these extension cords are about six feet long, and then we have the main extension cord over here. I only use LED lighting, so there's never a risk of overloading it, but this is how I manage to light everything up using these adapters. Another awesome cord to have is this four-way splitter right over here. This is like the three outlet adapter that we have, but it gives you a little bit more room so that everything is not so tightly connected together. I have about 10 of these. I absolutely love them. I'm linking them as well, and they're rated for outdoor use. These are the outlet timers that I use. They are amazing. I've had these for like four years. I love that on the top, they go by hours, 
You can do it dust to dawn, you can keep it on all the time, or do this. I normally keep it at six hours. And then when the sun goes down, the sensor will turn them on. It allows you to plug in six cords to this. So I have about seven of these, they are awesome.